Hello guys, it's Unders, and today we're having a look at Waves Center. Reason being, been a couple of questions, bit of misconception, and I just want to explain what this really does. So I've just put together this example. What I've done is taken a mix of one of my tracks. This should have vocals and piano in it as well. However, I've removed those so I can really highlight this example. Loaded up on the screen is center. Now, essentially what this does is it takes what's called the phantom center. That's when you've got the same signal, both in the left and right. So you know when you're listening to a set of headphones that it feels like something's right in the center of your head, you're actually getting exactly the same information, both on the left and right hand side, and that creates that phantom center. This plugin works to separate the two things out. So you've got sides, which will be independent, left and right, and not identical and a center, which will be everything everything focused right in the middle. A kick drum and a lead vocal, for example, usually gonna be in the center, but they're exactly the same in the left and right stereo, and then you're gonna have like ad-libs and things that become part of the sides, right? Because they're slightly different on each channel. What center allows you to do is firstly, rebalance those two things, but equally it's got this low and high at the top, and that means we can balance what's going on in those center areas and we can go in and out. The reason I've chosen this as an example is uh, there's a bit of a reverb and things on the kick. So the kick actually ends up in the sides quite a bit. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in just a second. And then we can use the low parameter to adjust that and make it go uh, back into the center or so it's completely in the sides, like however we want it to be. It's really aimed as a mastering tool for correcting, uh, frankly, mistakes in a mix. So like what I've done with the kick drum here, I'll have to go back to the mix and fix it really because it's not gonna translate as well as it could. So let me show you what I mean real quick. I'm gonna play a little chunk of this loop. I'm gonna take the sides down so you're just listening to the center and using that low control, I'm gonna adjust what goes on with the kick. So now we're just listening to the phantom center and really focus on that kick drum. So that's really where my kick drum should be, right in the center there. But it's actually like this. Hear how much is being lost to the side? And if I push it, yeah, it would completely disappear. So really, we'd want it similar to that. Um, now, correcting it this way wouldn't benefit the mix because it's bringing a lot of other things really into the center as well. So if we listen to the difference with everything together. Right, it's narrowing the mix a little bit. Now I could uh, find like a medium space or somewhere like halfway here and maybe uh, push the high into the side a little bit more to make up for it. Yeah, ideally I'd go back to the mix and fix this mistake. Alternatively, we can check out things that are just on the side channels. And we can adjust those balances as well. So here you can hear where the, the kick's getting through quite a bit onto the sides and we can uh, accentuate that by actually pushing it more in there. The other thing that's featured in here is a transient shaper as well. And this can be quite important as to where you want to keep your transients. Um, in drum and bass, transients work best in the center generally. Um, so here we could actually dial the punch back so it's more in the center. So we'd maybe look to correct our track a little bit like this and I'd maybe even dial the sides back just maybe like half a dB. So if we just A and B that quickly, we should hear that the kick's gonna be a little bit more focused. Um, I've spread everything else a little bit more into the sides by pushing the high frequencies in there and made sure the transients are pushing more towards the center as well.
I really hope you can hear the difference there. And I hope that's cleared up one of the like purposes of center. Really, it's a mastering tool for correction, things like that. Um, ideally, you're gonna fix these things in the mix, but if like myself, you get mastering work and bits every now and then, things that just have to be achieved at that final stage, having center in your toolkit, for example, is uh, it's a pretty useful thing just to be able to make those corrections. So like those subtle changes there, they just define the mix a little bit. It feels a little bit like bus compression, what we're doing, but it's just giving a little bit more focus and putting everything in the area that we're after. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that's cleared up a little bit of what Center does. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next one.